Hello, welcome to This Is My Architecture from Sydney, Australia. Today I'm joined by Dennis from CSIRO. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Simon. What does CSIRO do? So CSIRO is Australia's government research agency, and we translate research into products that people use in their everyday lives. For example, we invented fast Wi-Fi. Can't live without fast Wi-Fi. That is so true. It's true, but you do research into something far more serious that has health implications. Tell us a bit about that. Indeed, so we do research in the cancer space. So cancer obviously is a big problem, and the major issue there is that cancer drugs at the moment do not work very well. So there's a new experimental tri trial where um, people take out immune cells from patients and modify them to better be able to recognize cancer. Mm -hmm. So they put them back in and let them do their natural thing, fight cancer. Interesting, that's fascinating. So you've had to build something though to, to help solve that domain because the, the genome is quite large. Give us a feeling of how big it is. That's right. So the genome is a fast space with three billion letters. Wow, so that's billion with a B. That's, that's, <laughs> that's right. So you've built something really interesting here that helps solve that problem. And basically you've got a, 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 an S3 hosted interface which is using Angular that the researchers can use and they interact with this API gateway, but then the magic happens. Walk us through that. That's right. So the researcher wants to search a certain area of the genome for potential target sites. And this is that first um, lambda function that we trigger. So this lambda function searches, it's just a regular expression, mm -hmm. but it searches the, the area that a researcher is interested in for potential target sites for the molecule CRISPR so to actually interact with. It's looking for that bit that it needs. Now once it's done that, it's persisting it? That's right. So it's populating the first Dynamo DB table with all the potential target sites that it actually found. And then what happens? So not every target site is created equal, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to score the, you know, the, the value of that particular target site, and we do that with a lambda function. Okay. But then also, the genome, as we said, is a vast is a vast space. So the problem there is that uh, we do have a, a space with four letters. That is the genome but it's three billion positions mm, long. So mm. therefore we have lots and lots of randomly occurring motifs yeah, or yeah. sequence bits. So if the one that we actually interested occurs somewhere else in the genome, that's not a good thing. Therefore, what we need to do is we need to start the off-target search. Mm -hmm. But the problem here is that the genome large, therefore it doesn't fit into a lambda function. And what we need to do is split it up. And the genome is very nice in that it comes with uh, in positions already in biological positions called um, chromosomes. Ah. So therefore, this particular lambda function triggers the SNS topic or primes the SNS topic to start a, another lambda function, a search function, to only look for that dedicated or that um, allocated area of the genome. So this starts to spin off lots and lots of lambda functions for each component. That's absolutely right. And where's this getting the data from? So the data is coming from an S3 bucket, which holds the genome, and then it downloads it on the fly, the right partition of the genome that it wants to search. Of course, because with S3 we've got range gets, we can just get the bit of the file we need into the lambda that's respective, and away we go. Exactly. So multiple lambda functions can actually query the same S3 uh, bucket. Sensational. And then this data comes back into the another DynamoDB table, which then, I'll draw this one, comes all the way across here, back to our API gateway, and into the hands of the researcher. That's right. So it's the information from the actual target sites that we have, how good they are, plus uh -huh. for each site, how many off targets are in the rest of the genome. And that together gets displayed to the researcher to make the optimal choice. Fantastic. So the nice thing about this is it's all serverless, which means that you've got as much research capacity and processing power as you need and as little as you need, depending on what researchers are doing. Yeah, that's right. So a researcher could um, query one gene, but they could also query, you know, the 20,000 other genes in the genome and Lambda is scalable enough to actually deal with that beautifully. And how's that different to how they would normally have done it? Normally bioinformatics tools would be shipped as binaries. So researchers would have to deal with installing and all the dependencies uh, rather than focusing on the actual research. So this takes, you know, that complexity completely out of the picture yeah. so that researchers can just use a web service and get on with their research. Fantastic. So you've just, you know, there's no infrastructure here, you've just built the, the bare minimum to, to get the job done. Um, and there's other elements to using Lambda that helps with the scientific process mm -hmm. as well. Tell us about that. That's right. So Lambda functions are plug and play. So therefore, if you come along with a better off-target score or on, or on target detection method, we can just slot them in and have the whole framework instantly better. Wow. So that's great for that iterative approach and improving as we go along. Indeed. And this can all be automated and packaged up in a cloud formation template and deployed for other researchers as well. So it's not just um, useful, but it's portable as well. Yeah, so it's, it's a nice shareable 
um, environment where we can just have a lambda function as a nuclear element and just share that with the next researcher. That's fantastic. What a great thing. Dennis, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture.